saw a really funny um, comic online that I'll try and find again to post on our web to link to on our website because it it was one of those ones that was funny, but on the one, other hand, it was kind of like, oh man, that is true. That was um, titled like Eight Steps to Writing a Walking Dead Story. <laughs> you know, and it, it was basically, you know, uh, you know, Rick starts out, you know, Rick meets a group of people. They find a place that seems great and they think they're safe. And then shit happens and people die and Rick is alone again and Rick sets off on foot again and repeat ad infinitum. And, you know, I love The Walking Dead. I, I am a huge fan. But I did have to admit that that is pretty true. That is the story cycle. Um, and so, you know, for the past, uh, you know, 10 issues or so, we've had this the community storyline where, um, you know, Rick and crew found this uh, walled community that seemed idyllic and safe and... And, you know, they they thought that they maybe were finally safe and could finally relax. But because it's The Walking Dead, there was always this sense of dread hanging over everything. Where you just knew that it wasn't going to last. That it's the, the whole series. <laughs> that the walls were quite literally going to come crashing down. And they did. And now there is zombie carnage <laughs> of the best kind. Um... Some characters die. There's a pretty dramatic development at the end of the issue that is another is possibly going to be another big game changer, like um, the end of the prison storyline. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens next. Oh. One thing I will comment about um, really quickly about the art. I generally do like Charlie Adler as an artist. I think he he uh, draws the zombies, you know, really well, and and I, I like his style. Um, I do know that this issue they put out, I believe, two in a month. I think 80, Walking Dead eighty two came out at the beginning of March, and Walking Dead eighty three came out the last week of March, and um, it it kind of showed. It looked. It seemed especially the latter half of the book, like the art was just kind of rushed, mm -hmm. you know, like just the, the, uh, the inking was much more, um, was not as detailed and sensitive as it has been in past issues. The shading was not as, excuse me, as nuanced, you know, and it just seemed like they were really in a rush to get the book out the door. You know, and, and The Walking Dead is one of these that has suffered from delay, being late and 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 things like that. And so I'm, I'm just guessing that you know, they, you know, probably had you know, the editors breathing down his neck saying, you know, f to get it done. But it, you could tell, and that was unfortunate because um, right. it was a little bit distracting. Especially because, like I said, there is a major plot development at the end of the issue um, that, you know, could have warranted a little bit more care spent in the artwork yeah. huh? well that does make uh, quite a serious quite a serious difference but certainly that wasn't enough to put you off uh, the walking dead no yeah all right so this one i can't talk much about because i i don't follow the walking dead little little too dark for me says the goth boy but it really is um, i know i tried to get you into it well, I did read a few dozen, actually, and I think. And then you stopped. I, and I'm watching the series. I'm watching the series on AMC, which certainly that's not, you know, sweetness and light. Well, watched. It's not on currently. Not currently on. However, speaking of sweetness and light, um, I have been keeping up with the latest uh, Supermans. So I'm going to talk about Superman 710. So I originally started this current run of Superman after, uh, you know, not following... Uh, sort of mainstream continuity comics for decades. I picked up Superman and Wonder Woman specifically because I love uh, J. Michael Straczynski, JMS. From from here on out, we'll call him JMS just because that's a lot to say. And so I was following it because it was JMS. And um, 
both are very interesting in the sense that they're not sort of your, your traditional comic storylines. And JMS himself actually withdrew after the success of Superman Earth One to work on graphic novels. Um, and of course, he's also doing other things, as we know. He's doing scripts yep. and for movies and everything else. Busy he's guy. a really busy guy, and, and he's pulled off the monthlies. And now he's, uh, he's just working, or just did the outline. So this is the outline of his arc called Grounded. Um, and another guy named Chris Robertson, who I'm not uh, that familiar with, is, is doing the writing. So the plot is JMS, but not, you know, the, the words necessarily. So I know that um, there's been a lot of, I've seen a lot of people talking on the internet about not liking at all the grounded storyline of just just hating it and thinking it's really boring. Where do you stand on Superman's being Superman's walk across the America? Superman pulling a uh, Forrest Gump. Yep. Um, you know, at first I really liked it. At first I was very excited because it is it is a more psychological thing. And and like Forrest Gump, you know, I, I joke about Forrest Gump, but at the same time. There is a, a, a thread there because, in a sense, both of them are grieving. Forrest Gump was grieving for the loss of his, his, his beloved and, and Superman because he'd just gone through so much before. <clears throat> and I really did appreciate that aspect of it. Um, I think my issue is that while I did think that was worth pursuing, and I do like more psychological comics and, and deeper comics, and I think, you know, every comic doesn't need to be one big action-packed, you know, combat after another. But we're at 710 now. And he's still walking. And he's still walking. <laughs> and the problem is that the last few issues have basically been various heroes or people in his life or whatever coming up to him saying, you know, you got to get over this. Well, and so and it's, it's been one of, issue after another of you got to get I over mean, this. I mean, I haven't read it. I actually did read the first issue and I remember thinking it was okay, but it didn't grab me enough to read the rest. Um, but, you know, it's it's one of those things where because of the nature of the character, there's not it seems like maybe there's not as much tension because it's not like anyone thinks, oh my God, is Superman going to get over this? Or is he going to, you know, renounce his superhero-ness and just walk around like a bum for the rest of his life? You know, there's Which apparently no... is a very long life, so <laughs> that's a lot of walking. There's no real tension there. I mean, we all know that Superman is going to get over it and he is going to return to form. In a previous issue, they tried to build tension by basically having... Uh, super men, super women, super people from various timelines grab him and say, oh my God, if you don't get over it, none of us are going to exist. Uh. And, you know, but again, it's that whole, oh my God, you have to get over it. And after a while, we've heard that. I mean, it's just, it's, it's repeating the same thing. This entire issue, issue 710, consisted of um, Batman... I guess Bruce Wayne, the Batman Incorporated Batman, grabbing uh, Superman. I don't mean literally. I mean calling him with the infrared super symbol in the sky. And the entire issue is them standing on a hill reminiscing about the first time they worked together before they knew who each other was, when they were still in civilies, civvies, when they were still in their, in their civilian clothing, and about this thing in the East that they did, and about that, and, and how they sort of first met that way. And um, it was, you know, it wasn't bad. It was a, a you know, fine little, little, you know, romp in the, in the, in, you know, the Eastern part of the, of the world in Asia. But it all ended with the, and so you see, you need to get over it. <laughs> it was, so, you know, it, it sort of was like a detour that, there, it struck me as this uh, arc has has run. That the arc has has sort of run out, and so now we're throwing in things that are almost irrelevant. So what it sounds like you're saying is that this was an interesting idea that 
probably should have been more like a mini series, like a, yeah. a, a run of, you know, four issues, five issues, sure. something like that. All right, well. And I, I can't help but wonder, and this isn't to put down, I don't mean to put down uh, Chris Robertson, who's, who's doing the writing now, because he's certainly uh, a very uh, qualified guy. You know, the, the, the um, dialogue and things like that is snappy, and, you know, so certainly I don't mean this as an insult on him. But it would have been interesting to see what would have happened if uh, JMS would have been able to uh, maintain... I don't think he could have maintained it for the whole run of 12 issues or 13, however long it's going to be. But I think that um, he's, you know, maybe just because it was his idea to begin with that maybe he would have had more to say. But anyway, that's, All right, that's so uh, Superman 710. Shall we move on? All right, so you had started talking last uh, podcast about Green Lantern, Green Arrow by Dennis O'Neill yeah, I, and I Neil Adams. Yeah, I pretty much gave all of my thoughts about it last week, so we can just briefly touch on it because you read it. That's right. I read the whole... You finished. You finished yes. the... You had a couple left to go, a couple issues left to go. I finished reading reading it. Um, this is like the second trade paperback yeah. that we read from... It collects 80-something through 80-something else um, and, a, and a few short stories that were in Flash. Um, and th- these were all from 70, from 71, I think, and a couple in 72. So it's that old style. So just to give my opinion, if, if you want the, uh, the um, full, fullness of, of, of Michelle's opinion, then please go back and listen to uh, Comics Corner number four if you That's haven't right. yet. But I will just <laughs> say what she said. Yeah, <laughs> I'll go with that. No, seriously, it, it is it is very very good. You know, there it's very seventies in style. It's very much in that style. You know, the way no one could just do something. You know, these days we have more panels that are empty. That it's the visuals that really yeah. carry the story. But back then, you know, someone would have to tell you what they're thinking. You know, <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to move my arm to the left and and then look at this other person. I mean, they couldn't just do it. I they do had love to... the impressive in- internal monologues of, oh, ouch, my arm hurts. Oh, my goodness, I'm going to miss. What should I do? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, th- that was the style back then. The art is great. Neil Adams is is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting because just personal preference, I think the art of the 70s is sort of, maybe it's because, you know, that when I was, you know, really, really small, I mean, that's what was the... That's what the, you started That's what reading. I started with. I really like that style, and the, and I'm, I'm used to the 80s style as well. You know, but... I think some comics in the 90s, you know, I mean, they were, you know, maybe trying new things or whatever, but I'm not so thrilled with that 90s style. Oh, God, the 90s. Oh, Spawn and all that. Ugh. It's just ugly. Just super muscle bound um, with weird, lumpy muscles that don't really look like they correspond with any sort of anatomical anything. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah, so be, before we uh, we finish talking about uh, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, and if, if you do like or are curious about 70s comics, you know, I, I couldn't recommend the uh, the second trade paperback of Green Lantern, Green Arrow more. And they are socially relevant. I yeah, mean, they really no, they are. are. They they talk about uh, the social issues of the day. Michelle already went into how I much she loved like them. I think like I talked about last time, you know, you do have to just grit your teeth a little bit and get past some of the really dated... Um, dialogue and uh, like we already talked about the style that's just changed Um, you know you do have to get past that but if you can the stories are great they're fun there's some great action Um, you have what is probably my favorite uh, Green Lantern construct of all time which is the winged pegasus you gotta love the winged Um, pegasus but you know they're they're really worth reading because not just are they fun really well written stories they also do make a point and have something to say that is still i think really relevant yeah in fact today. it's al- it's almost sad how relevant they are today i know you would have hoped that you know 40 almost 40 years later i guess exactly 40 years later mm-hmm. from 71 um you would have hoped that we would have 
solved some of these social issues that they were commenting on 